Dear photography loving people and also videography as well, of course. Today we are talking about the Sony Alpha 7 IV, especially which memory cards are the best one and the best price performance card you can get. So stay tuned. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering why my fingers or especially thumbs maybe look a little bit like I just killed a smurf, uh, don't worry. As a proper German and it's Christmas season I had to prepare red cabbage so that's why maybe not the best idea before I start recording a video. Anyway, let's go back to the Sony Alpha 7 IV. As you have maybe seen in the beginning, the Sony Alpha 7 IV featuring two memory card slots. Or you could also say three, but you can only use two cards at the very same time. So the upper slot can feature both an CF Express Type A card or SD memory card, but you have to decide which one. Does it make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. So I set up the Sony Alpha 7 IV for uh, continuous shooting mode in uncompressed raw images. So now the first test with the CF Express Type A card. And I could do this maybe not all day long, but for quite a long time, usually until the memory card is full. Why? Because the CF Express Type A cards are so fast, there's really no limit for the Sony Alpha 7 IV. So as soon as a picture is ready, it is maybe instantly saved on the CF Express Type A card. So it's yeah like an endless buffer, let's say, until the memory card is full. If we are going with SD memory cards, I'm just taking the new 2000X card from Alexa, but doesn't matter, I will tell you in a second the other recommendations. It's a little different. So you hear now the buffer is full and we are, I don't know, back with three, three and a half, maybe four images per second. That's what you can get with the fastest SD UHS2 memory cards. Why is that? Uh, the buffer in the Sony Alpha 7 IV is quite small, 13, 14 images. If you have a fast UHS2 card, you can shoot up to 30, 35 images in uncompressed raw and compressed raw. It's maybe double that, but not, not much more. So with the 10 FPS and the Sony Alpha 7 IV, let's say between three and five seconds full speed. After that, it's a quite a bit lower. So where's the problem? Why just don't get in CF Express Type A card? For me, there are two, maybe three major problems. Number one, CF Express Type A cards are really expensive, usually two times up to three times as expensive as yeah, the fastest SD UHS2 memory cards. Second reason, and maybe let's have a closer look on the Sony card again. Um, it's the second largest one you can get actually, because right now they are just only 80 and 160 gigabytes. Prograde also announced, and I'm not sure if they're already av available, they are CF Express Type A cards, but also the Prograde cards are limited to just 160 gigabytes. So let's say you want to do an entire holiday with just one memory card, maybe not enough. So that's the second big reason for me. And the third one, uh, let's go back to the Sony Alpha 7 IV. As shown in the beginning, you have two memory card slots. The upper one, CF Express Type A, SD, yeah, combi slot, and the lower slot is for SD cards only. Let's say you are shooting weddings or something like this, and you, of course, want to do backups. I guess there's no real problem if you, let's say, doing ZCF Express Type A cards on the upper slot and having this one for war images and doing the backup with JPEG only on the SD cards. But if you are on the really professional level and want to shoot war on both cards, yeah, of course, the second card is can only be an SD memory card, so you're limited to the speed of the second card. And yeah, you definitely don't get 10 FPS 
for more than 30, 40, maybe 50 images if you're doing compressed wall. So for me, that's yeah, a huge bottleneck Sony put into the Sony Alpha 7 IV. For me, it's a bad decision. What could they have done better? Maybe let's see the Sony Alpha 7 S III featuring two double card slots. Let's call them like that. Or spend a much bigger buffer, image buffer, internal image buffer for the Sony Alpha 7 IV like most camera manufacturers do. So even with SD memory cards, you can get, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 images whatsoever or maybe over 100. But like this, yeah, maybe not the best decision. But you are here to know which memory cards are the best. So let's get back to the initial question or topic of this video. We tested over 80 memory cards with the Sony Alpha 7 IV. If you see all results, because it's yeah way too much to explain, maybe check out the link in the video description. There you will find all the results tested with the Sony Alpha 7 IV. But here are some recommendations of mine. As already mentioned, CF Express Type A cards are really expensive, but if you want to have the highest speed possible with the Sony Alpha 7 IV, definitely go with a CF Express Type A card. But as mentioned, just as of today, the maximum is with 160 gigabytes and they are really expensive. If you want to spend a little less and you say, yeah, maybe 30, 40, 50 images and compressed or lossless compressed wall is fine with you. Um, a couple of recommendations actually, the brand new Angelbird V90 card and my, yeah, just as an all-time favorite, the Kingston Canvas React Plus. Pay attention to the Plus because the older generation is three times slower. And also the new Lexa 2000X. You can find out if it's, it's the new one or not just by looking at the card with V90 specification. That's the new generation. Also very fast is the ProGrade V90 card, or I guess it's the Platinum or Titanium series, I'm not sure right now. And also, of course, the Sony Tough G. All of these memory cards are amazingly fast. The difference, I don't know, is about three, four, maybe 5%. So you can measure it, but definitely you don't hear it, feel it whatsoever. So they are really close together. Price performance wise, I guess the best recommendation is the Kingston Canvas React Plus with usually around 100 bucks per 128 gigabytes, sometimes even lower than that. And you, in most markets, you also get a um, really nice card reader with the memory card. So price performance in the really high end section that would my go to memory card. Even though I'm a huge tech nerd, I'm still aware that not all of you are actually in need of the fastest SD or even CF Express Type A memory cards. So let's come to some more mid-range price performance recommendations. One is the new Angelbird V60 Mark II series. It's important that it's or that it is Mark II because the first generation is much slower. And also the brand, brand new Lexa 1800X. Both are still fast. Both are uh, SD UHS 2 memory cards, so a fast interface. Also a fast reader on your PC, Mac, wherever. Still, of course, they are slower memory cards with an even better, let's say, price per gigabyte. But it wouldn't be my recommendation. Because the Sony Alpha 7 IV is featuring the brand new 33 megapixel sensor. Because of it, even JPEG images are kind of large, not as huge, let's say, as of in the Sony Alpha 7 R4 with the 60 megapixel sensor, but still large files. Or let's say in the future you decide to do some more continuous shooting or let's say more going more into videography. So it could happen that you're limited by your SD card choice. 
Of course, there are great UHS-1 SD cards like this Kingston Canvas Select Plus series. But as already mentioned, it wouldn't be yeah, my choice even if you don't need the fastest cards. But as also already mentioned, maybe check out the link in the video description where you find all test results. Of course, many UHS-1 SD cards. Check it out for yourself. And as of right now, thanks for watching this video. And if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you're interested in more tech stuff around photography, maybe even into memory cards, consider to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.